<laughs> okay, planning board, we are live. We are recording. Phone lines are open. Go for it. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome to the Town of East Hampton planning board meeting for April 17th, 2024. We have a pretty full plate on tonight. Uh, we have a public hearing, which we will get to momentarily. Uh, we have a presentation from Housing Director Shans. Is he here? Planning director. Oh, Jeremy's here. In lieu of Jeremy Samuels, and planning director, in lieu of housing director. We have a couple of matters on for lot line modifications and site plan review, and um, my, the Myers matter is being uh, adjourned. So if anyone's here for that, uh, stay tuned for a later date. The first matter that we have on is the uh, Hampton Racket at Green Hollow site plan. Michael, do you have the I have it. notice? I have it. you would be so kind as to read the notice. Take notice that a public hearing will be held before the East Hampton Town Planning Board at Town Hall 159 Pentagon Road, East Hampton, on Wednesday, April 17, 2024, at 6.30 p.m., or as soon thereafter, as this matter may be heard, to modify the application of Hampton Racket at Green Hollow site plan to construct four padel courts to replace it's actually two del courts or two tennis courts four two and this is an over notice so this seems to be okay so four padel courts to replace two tennis courts site plan special permit approval was issued february 28 2018 to legalize a number of already built structures and the existing tennis camp use the property contains 259,022 square feet, 5.946 acres, and is located in the northerly side of Buckskill Road, East Hampton, and is situate in a A3 resident zoning district as shown on the official zoning map of the town of East Hampton and is identified on the Suffolk County tax map as parcel 300-184-3-11. Subject application is classified as a type two action pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act. Part 617 of the New York Code of Rules and Regulations and Chapter 128, Environmental Quality Review of the Town Code. A site plan prepared by George Walbridge Surveyors, PC, dated revised March 7, 2024, and a Padel cut sheet prepared by Padel Gallus, dated received March 7, 2024, are available for inspection at the Planning Board offices, 300 Pentago Place, Suite 103, East Hampton, New York. The public hearing will be held live and in person by the Planning Board and will be available electronically by video and teleconferencing and will be televised on local TV, channel 22, and available for live stream on the LTV website. The public shall be permitted to appear in person, but may also provide comments on the matter, on the matter heard by calling 351-888-6331. Any person or party wishing to be heard with respect to the foregoing may do so in person or by agent or by attorney, or by call-in to the live stream, or by written comment addressed to the Planning Board 300 Pentago Road, Pentago Place, pardon me, Suite 103, East Hampton, New York, 11937. Comments may also be submitted to the Planning Board by email at planningboard at easthamptonny.gov. All comments must be received by the Planning Board by the date and time of the public hearing. March 2024, Samuel Kramer, Chairman. Thank you for that. Enthusiastic. Do we have jurisdiction? Uh, yes, we do, Chair. I reviewed the affidavit of service and posting, and it, it appears it was properly noticed, and we therefore have jurisdiction. Very good. Tina, would you like to give us a bit of an overview? Sure, briefly. Thank you, Sam. Hello, everyone. Um, I have the location, 172 Buckskill Road up on um, the GIS. This is an aerial image of the site located in Winscott. It is um, adjacent to Buckskill Road and the LIRR line abuts it to the north. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you can see regionally where we are. 
Uh, now I will bring up the spectrum. <laughs> As the is indicated, the application is to modify a site, site plan special permit um, approval that was issued in February 28, 2018. It is to construct four new Padel courts to replace three existing. There's also um, some additional parking uh, on grass proposed. The site is classified as a semi-public facility according to the East Hampton Town Code. The work in 2018 um, had many elements, including construction of grass parking areas, removal of sand pit, addition of walkways, gravel parking, relocation of shed, and to legalize um, already as built tennis courts and a tennis camp use on the site. The site is zoned A3 residential and is within the Suffolk County groundwater protection area and the Suffolk County Pine Barrens area. It, the site is surrounded by residential properties on all sides. The board has received uh, many public comments regarding this application. They are in file. I encourage everybody to please read those comments. The comments received thus far have both been in support of the project, noting it's important as a community resource um, and noting that Fidel has really taken off in the tennis community and how these features would be advantageous to the site. Comments raising concerns regarding the application have noted the um, ambiguity of the number of courts on site with respect to the original approval that had 13 courts and the number of parking. Um, I'll note that the planning department had during the first review of this, asked that the site plan be updated to clearly label those features. So we reiterate that's an important um, aspect of clarifying these matters. Other concerns raised were regarding um, potential restaurant uses on site, and those have been referred to code enforcement from what I understand. And um, so the detailed public comments are in the file, but that's a, a really general overview. Okay. Tonight, we're going to hear public comment on this application. Um, and, uh, and subsequent to that, the um, applicant will have an opportunity to respond uh, to the public comments. And uh, after that, there will be a uh, what's called a wrap-up memo where the planning department will provide uh, the planning board with an analysis of the public comments. We'll, of course, hear all those public comments, and we will all read the documents that have been submitted uh, to the uh, by the public into the record. Uh, the way this will work tonight is whoever wishes to speak with respect to this application can step up to the podium. Please state your name and address, spell your last name, and then you'll have three minutes to speak. I will keep track. Um, the... After everyone in the room has had an opportunity to speak for three minutes, then uh, we will see if there's anybody on the uh, LTV line. And after they have all had an opportunity to speak for three minutes, anybody in the room who wishes to speak again for one more three-minute session has uh, will be given the opportunity to do that. And then after that, anyone on the uh, phone will be given an opportunity for uh, three minutes. So if you will follow that, the first person who may, is, is there anyone uh, who wishes to speak with respect to this application, please step up. Again, please state your name, spell your last name. And, uh, Absolutely. Your address. Good evening. Uh, my name is James Foster. Um, my address is 33 Town of Lane, East Hampton. Uh, I was a member of the planning board many years ago. Um, I'll promise I'll be less than three minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, Foster, F-O-S-T-E-R. Um, I'm just here to speak on, I think, more of, of the character of the of the applicant. Um, you see Hampton's rap, Racket LLC. You go look at a corporation. Uh, Monica Graham is the is the owner, and her, and her brother John. And um, I know them to be very community oriented people. Uh, do a lot for the community. I know they have the tennis camp, and they've done a lot of good things for local kids there. They won't speak to that likely, knowing them, uh, but they do, and I think that's something that needs to be just in the overall scheme of things taken into consideration. Um, I know they're certainly trying to do. This has been an, a, a 
I don't know how to characterize it, but an, an event, I guess, for many, many years trying to get this CEO straightened out and make this place legal, which I know Monica is committed to doing. Um, and I think that with the planning board's guidance, the planning department's guidance, they can do that. Um, Padel is something I know is a fast growing sport. Um, I think it'll probably be quieter than having tennis if it's, you know, a neighbor concern. Um, but I, m my main purpose this evening was to speak to the character of the people behind the application. Um, and I think it's an, they're an asset to our community. And um, I'll keep it under three minutes by ending it there. Thank you. <laughs> I knew we kept it under one. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who wishes? Please step up to the podium. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Chris Carney, uh, C-A-R-N-E-Y. I live on 19 Country Lane in East San Domingo. Um, so I'm speaking on behalf of Monica and John Graham as well in Hampton Racquet Club. I've known them for almost 20 years now. Uh, and uh, I can't think of anyone who's ingratiated themselves more in the community than those two. Uh, the amount of charity work that they do, as uh, JP said and continue to do over the years, is, is I can't think of anyone who's done more. Um, they funded us, Monica funded a soldier ride about 17 years ago where we brought some soldiers to England. Uh, I had a fighting chance benefit there two years ago at Hampton Racquet Club. Um, which was uh, uh, meant a lot to me. I know she's done stuff for Ellen's Run. I know they were strong supporters of Project Most. And um, I've had the pleasure of training countless kids over the years that they've actually paid for. I had a personal training business um, who were like young athletes who uh, whose parents couldn't afford it or needed something positive. With it. And they sort of acted as benefactors for that. So um, I've seen what they've done for the community. I know that Padel is a growing sport, but I'm not an uh, expert in it. Um, I know it's a gateway sport for other people who are trying to get into things um, and that it's, it's accessible to more people. So I think it's more inclusive. It probably has a larger um, window of people that can do it, people that can do it. And um, being where the, the club is located, I just feel like, you know, while I can't speak on the specifics, I'm not an attorney, knowing that it's, you know, adjacent to, I heard you say it's surrounded by residential property, but, you know, it does have the bordering on one side, the uh, train tracks. And then right on the other side of the train tracks is the ice, ice skating rink. Which hums pretty loudly, or you know, you're early soft all through the winter. So I think it's you know, in an appropriate location, it would be an asset to the community. And John and Monica have been nothing but um, gracious to uh, to the East Hampton community since they've been here. So uh, it's an honor for me to speak on their behalf, and I thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak on with respect to this application? Good evening. I am David Buda. I reside Buda B U D A. I reside at Six Montgomery Avenue in East Hampton. Um, I often watch the planning board meetings and take an interest in applications. And this one came up with uh, came to my attention because this is a lot of anomalies and questions that I think the board needs to take a closer look at. Uh, as already has been noted, the public notice uh, erroneously states that. Um, the application was to replace four existing tennis courts with um, four Padel courts. Um, the original application actually asked to convert one tennis court to three Padel courts. Uh, and the latest plan that the surveyor submitted has notation that four Padel courts are to replace two tennis courts. Um, I brought with me, and I'll be submitting to the record, uh, a recent aerial from Google Earth, which was done a year ago, 2023, which shows that in this area that is to be converted to four Padel courts with parking, there were clearly three tennis courts. But also, uh, I just want to, I don't, don't know if I'll finish in three minutes, but I certainly will finish in six. Um, the public notice here, uh, what you're doing is you're seeking to modify a site plan approval that was granted in 2018 that actually has never been fully implemented with the issuance of any certificate of occupancy. Is, is that really a sound and wise policy for the planning board to do a essentially a modified brief review that you would ordinarily do for a modification when this site plan actually has never been consummated? Uh, building permits were issued in 2019, 2020, and 2021, and then merely renewed year after year without completion of any. The most recent building permit renewals were issued a few weeks ago on uh, March 22nd. 
It's my understanding that the tennis business, tennis club business that operates on this subject property, which the county describes as being 5.6 acres, uh, it's a residential property, and it does so pursuant to a variance that was originally granted by the ZBA in 1984. I haven't actually read it, so I don't have, no, I'm not really familiar with all of its terms, but I understand that the planning board site plan approval that you granted in 2018 refers to and limits 13 playing courts or 13 tennis courts plus one practice court on the basis of that variance that was granted to 1984. And thus it's, thus it's very important to actually know what is going on here. Okay. So aerial imagery shows that last year there were 13 full-size tennis courts and at least four pickleball courts. But there probably is another pickleball court where once upon a time there was a basketball court at the eastern edge of the subject property. I brought for the record tonight some materials confirming the existence of at least four pickleball courts on the 14th extra court that was squeezed in between two tennis courts. So I will submit that when I come up to the podium for the next round. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public who wish to comment uh, this evening? Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. David Kirst, K I R S T. Matthews Kirst, Cooley, and Choron, 241 Panago Road, East Hampton. I'm here on behalf of my client, Gregory Gordon, the owner of 168 Buckskill uh, adjacent property. Um, to follow up on Mr. Buddha's point, um, I respectfully request that any public hearing be left open for a submission of a proper survey showing the delineated courts that are actually there on the property. Uh, as Mr. Buddha alluded to, recent aerials show that not only are there additional courts, um, but where the sand court is, or sand pit is, that that is a lined pickleball court as well, with what looks to be some sort of artificial turf uh, adjacent to that, between that and the clubhouse. Um, we have submitted a letter to the record, actually two letters now, and we just reiterate our point that Mr. Buddha raised as well. There was a variance for 13 courts. The site plan special permit standards for this property would actually be an, a limit of 11 playing courts. And that's playing courts, not tennis courts. And there is a distinction that I, I really hope the board looks at. Um, because when you look at what's here for playing courts, you're in the area of 18 to 20, which should be limited to 13 and under the site plan standards would be limited to 11. So they're well over what should be allowed. They've continued to change things up um, without permits, run additional businesses off the property without permits. And we just ask that the board take the time to hold them to the prior site plan uh, and have them implement that before entertaining further modifications especially when we're not even sure what exactly is on this property to begin with, uh, as the survey doesn't really lay that out for us. So um, that is all I have. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Is there anybody else uh, present today who wishes to speak? Please step up to the podium. Good evening. Thank you very much for this time. Um, the character of these people. Is your name? Oh, my name is Gregory Gordon, and I own the property 158 Buckskill Road. Your last name, sir? Gordon, sir. Spell? G-O-R-D-O-N. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I don't think char the character of the people of the owner of the club is a question here. And I think the question here is, is what is allowed by code and is allowed by law. By law. I mean, East Hampton has... Uh, some very interesting rules, and I think what is, that's what made East Hampton special. You can't put too much into too small a space. You can't put 10 pounds of groceries in a five pound bag. And the reality is, is that uh, what has happened here is that ever since 1985, when they first went, got the who will go from 10 to 13, they, and then they, and later on, uh, they, arrived, they put some more courts in, and, and retroactively trying to get approvals. I think what's important here, I cannot understand that now. 
I, I can see the survey, but it, it, David Wood is, actually, Wood is actually correct. It doesn't define the courts, and it also doesn't define each and every individual uh, issue that's going on. So I think the first you have to do is define what's really happening here. Where are the tennis courts? What are pickleboard courts? Where are the youth courts? These courts are not defined. <clears throat> if you take a look, the, the green courts to the left, which are intended to be the pickleboard courts, and there's a square, and then there's a, a it's an oblong piece or a rectangular piece there. It doesn't show those are all youth courts. And what means that a court, a court requires parking. A court, a court means people are coming and going. Um, and that's why the original code defined, you know, pre-existing non-conforming use in re residential areas. So therefore, we can't really see how many courts there are, what kind of courts they are, what are the size of those courts. This, uh, this really doesn't define it. So I, I'm objecting to this approval. I'm, as a neighbor, uh, it is, you know, there have been cars parked all over the place for many, many reasons. When this was originally approved in 1985, uh, there were five board members, two of them objected on the basis of parking. They were dead on the money. Parking has been, in many places, you know, uh, up and down Green Hollow and also Buckskill Road going through to these tennis courts. So I think the first thing I have to do is I have to define what, where are the courts, what kind of courts they are, and what they're doing with these courts. And then I think they can even discuss it. But I think no matter, originally you were, they were allowed uh, 10 or 11 courts, as my attorney said, but they went to 13, now they're up to about 18, now they want to go to 20. That means more cars, more septic, more environmental impact. There's no point in having environmental impact issues. 20 seconds. Not a problem. There's no point in having environmental impact issues where you try to limit the, you know, the amount of nitrogen and, and, uh, and pollution going into the environment with complex suspect systems and then packing all of this stuff into a very tight space because that's what's happening. You can't see it. You don't know it. I don't know it. And I think the only first thing to do is have to find define what is a court? Is this a tennis court? Is this a youth court with the lines, et cetera? And I kind of am suspicious that we will court to the left of the clubhouse. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak with respect to this application? Okay. Matt, is the well the applicant will have an opportunity after we're done. Uh, Matt, do you have anybody in queue uh, on LTV? You have zero callers. Thank you. In that case, we will revisit whether anyone in the room, which is another three minutes. The reason you need, you need to. I'm David Buddha still. Um, the most recently submitted survey uh, does have, takes liberties with uh, some facts. It describes the four pickleball courts as being one tennis court and a mini camp, cor mini camp courts. Um, there also is a serious uh, land use issue question that I, I would hope the planning department would, would delve into. Um, the Green Hollow Road extension that runs right into this property and also services an adjacent uh, residents uh, is labeled on the survey as being abandoned, uh, but not according to the uh, New York, not according to the Suffolk County Real Property Tax Service Agency. They show it as being unabandoned. So uh, in the past there was some there was parking on this roadway. Now I don't think that they're planning any parking or use of it. But today when I drove by the on Buckskill Road, I noticed that there was a gate blocking the entire access to the to the property, as if they have taken it into their own ownership, which they, clearly they have not. So I think the board needs to clarify exactly what is the acreage, what is the status of that roadway, the Green Hollow Road extension. Mm -hmm. Next, the, the planning department and the planning board should also uh, take questions about the restaurant service use, which you've already been, already mentioned. And in adjacent to that, uh, ancillary to that, uh, no one has raised a question about the fact that the Hampton Racket at Green Hollow LLC in April 2023 obtained a New York State um, State Liquor Authority on-premise liquor license for its summer food and beverage business. The license ID number is 0371213130500. That license is currently inactive, having expired in October, but it, that's because it's a summer 
use license and can be renewed annually for seasonal use. The fire marshal, the, the record shows me that the fire marshal has informed you that the proposed project is not ADA compliant. I have not seen any discussion of that or any uh, paperwork on how that has been resolved or how that has been dealt with. Um, that leads me up to the point of providing the record. And Mrs. Kramer, if you just tell me what to do, I brought multiple copies. What I have is a aerial from 2023, a copy of the Pickleball courts, of course, pickleball is usually four people per court in active use, and the listing of uh, Hampton Racket as a site for four outdoor pickleball courts on a uh, site called um, Pickleheads. We have 20 seconds left. So if you just tell me about what to do with it, I'll be happy to do it. It's for the board. I have a copy yeah, yeah, for yeah, everyone. Yeah, that's fine. Why don't you submit it, um, we'll submit it to you? Jody, submit it to Jody, and it will be included in the record. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. All right, does anyone else wish to uh, supplement or augment their prior comments? Sir? In three minutes, please repeat yeah. your name. Uh, Greg McGordon. Thank you. I, I wasn't aware that there was a, that a liquor license that applied for. I didn't know that you could serve uh, have, a, have alcohol facilities on a residential piece of property. Thank you. Okay. Matt, do you have anybody else uh, or anyone else at all in queue? You have zero calls on the line. Thank you. Very much. Okay. Uh, we, I think we need to close the uh, hearing and well. I, I would we, recommend that we leave the hearing right. open. I think there's a lot of substantive and there comments are, there are that have been there are matters. And I would encourage the applicant to prepare right. responses. I'll leave, yeah. give you the opportunity to speak now if you want, or if you want to do it at some later point. It's your call. The record, uh, it's going to be a motion, just so you're clear. There's going to be a motion made, and I expect that it's going to be to keep the record open for further written, written comment. Uh, the public speaking comment will close tonight, I expect, I anticipate. But, so um, just bear that in mind. You may want to comment further. Um, Britton Bistrian, uh, I represent the applicant, B-I-S-T-R-I-A-N. Um, I think I'd like to just give a broad, broad little bit of an overview because there was um, some things that were said that were contrary to um, the history on this parcel. So my clients bought this around 2012. Um, they bought it in a encumbered position. It hadn't had a certificate of occupancy until uh, since the mid eighties. Um, they bought the property knowing that soon thereafter, um, I was engaged to help them sort out exactly they had a long history of zoning board applications and things like that and figure out exactly what had been added. They didn't have a lot of due diligence to work with. So that was the jumping off point. Um, we then went through a pretty lengthy uh, site plan process. There were, when they purchased the property, there was 14 tennis courts constructed. Um, the property is allowed by density to have 10, five acres, two courts per acre, 10 tennis courts. They got a use variance to add three, because at that time it was a different zoning and they needed, they wouldn't need a use variance now, but they have the addition, the, the variance of three extra courts. So they are permitted to have 13 tennis courts. When I came to this board and I want to say it started in 2013, may have been 2014, um, that proposal, which was the original site plan that we're here to modify, was to reduce the club by one tennis court to make it back to the conforming to the CO and um, to add parking because uh, the parking on site, it, it, the original planning board approval and it was typical in 1984, didn't have delineated parking. So it was hard to restore to that because there was no plan to work off of. So we knew that they were, um, they had to have 52 spaces. So part of that site plan also included constructing those 52 spaces. And also they had recently, recently now 10 years ago, um, they had had an emergency on court 13, which is the court to the um, far, I believe that's west. Yes, west, the far left of the screen. And um, they were unable to get emergency access to that court. That was what drove the second access um, that was part of that site plan approval was to have a secondary parking lot there to allow for 
employee parking to allow, you know, as some of the, somebody said, there's, there's been parking problems there because they haven't had parking on site. The whole purpose of this site plan was to, was to provide that parking, reduce the courts, and the other things were inconsequential, move a shed, reduce a shed, nothing of any grave um, changes. The, the CO did list the 13 courts uh, with a clubhouse with restaurant facilities. Moving ahead, um, we were, uh, this board and the client was Article 78 um, and that process went on for four or five years. COVID sort of extended it. Um, the, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not gonna play one on TV. Um, but then it, that was appealed after that Article 78, the, the town and the applicant were successful in that. Um, the They appealed again to um, Brooklyn and also were unsuccessful there. So that process right there was about four years COVID was in the middle there. Um, and so although we had had site plan approval and had a building permit in place, our hands were tied because any investment that we made into the property was at risk. Mm -hmm. So the, the building permit was renewed on an annual basis, but it, in earnest, the work in the site plan approval from 2018 did not start until the fall of, this year, of, last, of 2023. So if Mr. Buddha submitted an aerial with an extra tennis court, well, yeah, that was part of our site plan approval was to remove that, but we couldn't remove it until we were out of the court issue. Um, so we, in the fall of 2023 into early winter, um, we, I was using that. Oh, I'm sorry, I could go to the um, <laughs> We built the parking lot. We uh, included in, in that site original site plan approval was to make one of the courts handicapped accessible, um, putting a handicapped accessible parking spaces, which are constructed as well as a handicapped accessible ramp to a court. So um, I think there may have been some confusion. Again, there was a, the approvals that we got weren't acted on for five years or four plus years. So if you're looking at this area, yeah, there's an extra court there, but it's demolished today. Um, it's not there anymore or it's mostly removed. Um, that site plan approval uh, approved 13 tennis courts, 12 full-size tennis courts, and uh, because the camp was a special permit use, there's a one tennis court that's in the heart, the nucleus of the club, that's divided into four miniature courts because the kids are three, and um, it's, they can't play in on the large court. So that that practice court was, um, which I think Mr. Buda must not know the difference between a pickleball court and children's tennis court, but maybe they can use it for both, but that's the purpose of that court is for the camp use. And if you do, could you pull up the survey again? Sure. Um, there was also a, a statement that was made that I didn't submit the survey um, on March 7th after the last planning board hearing. I submitted this survey, which has all of the parking spaces delineated, which was a topic of conversation the last time I was in front of you. And each one of the courts um, is labeled with how many courts there are on site. So th there's no mystery here. If you walk through this, it says four tennis courts, two tennis courts, two tennis courts, one tennis court, two tennis courts, four proposed Patel, Patel courts. And then you can go around and say the same thing. It says. 17 parking spaces. So all of that is delineated on the plan that was submitted immediately the day after your last work session. Um, so I'm not certain where that misinformation was coming from either. That just statement was that we didn't have it when we were reviewing it last time and said we needed it. And right, it, it came the next day. Reviewed because we don't, we review it before we have public hearings as a standard practice. And I'm just making a statement that the what was yeah. requested of the board was in your file. Um, so the, the discussion about a clubhouse with a restaurant facility and a liquor license, a residential, a, a tennis club is a permitted use on a residential property. You know, South Fork Country Club is on a resident property. They all have clubhouses with restaurant uses. Um, you can apply for a liquor license. That's not anything in contradiction to, to our use. I'm not certain what the code enforcement um, question was. Um, just checking to make sure that it's I not a restaurant that was reported on site. Um, we didn't know about the liquor license until the public comment just now. Right. So um, during COVID, um, the world was a little strange when it came to restaurants. So a lot of people were doing what they could do to um, stay in business. So there were some, you know, the club operated a clubhouse for the restaurant. Um, right now it is restored to the, or it's in the process of being restored to the CO where this is a membership club for a membership use of a restaurant with a liquor license. 12 tennis courts and a practice court. Um, 
I don't really know if, if there's any substance to address the uh, the Padel because I didn't really hear anything particularly about what the modification in front of you is for. I just wanted to give you some background because I've worked here for now 12 years. Um, but the purpose is to convert, uh, and I don't, and the notice, I, I, don't, I didn't write the notice, um, but I, I believe it was just, if you over notice, it's fine, but it was, it's two tennis. There had been three courts in that location. One was demoed as part of the site plan. So if you look at it, maybe that's where the third court's coming from, that's demoed. There's two courts left. It's to convert those two courts to four Padel courts. That's what's in front of you for the modification. Um, and in addition, you know, it's hard because this is a blended, these parking lots are one parking lots built and the other one's not. The only modification that we're here for now is just that change of the court, number of courts on those two courts and the type of court that it is. Um, there's nothing else on the site plan. You may have, we tried to squeeze in some more parking because uh, we recognized that when we when we actually removed that tennis court that we could fit a few more spaces. So we did add some. We did propose to add some parking spaces, but that's the width and the depth of the modification in front of you. Additional parking and those four pedal ports. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, we'll, no further comment. Really? Yeah. What? It's, it's your call if you want to. It's not a debating society. If, if you're leaving it open for written comment. It's, it's going to be left open for written comment. It's going to be left open for written. Well, there's going to be a motion made. And it may be that that's where the motion will go. <laughs> so can I get a motion from the board? Say something, please. No, 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 no. Not now. Not now. We're making... I, should have closed it. I should have closed it before she spoke. <laughs> All right. Motion. I'm going to just reiterate. I think. It's, right. Do you mind if I yeah, just? Yeah, please. From the. From um, the I think a lot of public comments that you know we question some of the facts we have in the record currently have been submitted. I think it's appropriate if we resolve those via written response from the applicant. At a minimum, I think that the comment period should be held open to facilitate that being entered into the record, the planning department can evaluate it and come back to the board with hopefully a more clear and kind of reasoned understanding of what exactly is going on. So, so that you can prepare a more appropriate closing. Uh, Based on what the memory? applicant submits in response to the public comments. And that department. would be keeping it open for written public written comments from the public as well. I, I don't know that I see a need for that. I mean, I think we've had a we've had a standard public comment period. We got robust public comments. Um, I think there's enough for the applicant to respond to. I, I don't know that we need more. Um, I'm kind of neutral on that. But I think it's important that what we do have right now gets thoroughly responded to by the applicant. I think that it might be appropriate to have written public comment kept open because there's some ambiguities. Okay, um, I see written, that. From the written, written from the public and from the applicant. So giving the applicant the opportunity after all public comments have come in, final opportunity to give final response, which is the way things always go in these things. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so, so make a motion to close the verbal comment, but keep the written comment. Open for two, well, how long? A week? I'd say at least I'd say two. Two weeks. I would say at least two weeks, but we need the information for public, from the applicant submitted for two that weeks time for period. the public. Com I'm going to recommend two weeks for the public comment and thirty days for the respondent. So it'll be two weeks plus two weeks. I agree. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll make a motion that the uh, public, uh, the, the um, spoken public comment portion of the public hearing be closed. That the public be permitted two additional weeks from tonight to submit additional written comments and that the applicant have two weeks from that date to submit responses to all public comments, whether made tonight or made uh, in the written comment period that's uh, uh, being suggested by this motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We got that? <laughs> Passed seven nothing. All right? We're all good? Thank you all very much. Thank you for coming out and for your comments. Okay. Do you...
want to like hang around and give us the the uh, discussion later, or do you want to move right into it now, Mr. Chairman? As charming as you all are, <laughs> I, I am pinch hitting this evening. So uh, that, I, that's if, kinda... if it is possible for me to go next, I I would appreciate. It. Are you ready, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, Jeremy Samuelson on behalf of the Planning Department of East Hampton Town. Uh, I am here this evening to, I, I actually was chuckling to myself a moment ago because uh, the last time I got up to share a proposed code change with you all, I made the mistake of saying this should be very quick and an hour and a half later, I was still standing here at the podium. So I, I will not say that this evening. I will observe for you that I think this is a, relative, a relatively succinct proposal that you are being asked to uh, ponder as part of your deliberations this evening. So um, you all have in your packet, I hope, a a uh, memo that was prepared for you by Eric Chance, uh, who you all know well and who now serves as a director of housing and community development. Uh, Mr. Chance was hoping to join you this evening to share with you uh, some observations about his work. Unfortunately, something popped up late in the day on his end, and uh, he regrettably is unable to be here. So in essence, uh, what you have here is a change in nomenclature. And so uh, you all have uh, lived in this community for a while and understand the, uh, the distinct needs uh, that the community has around affordable housing. And there are uh, many new efforts that have been put forward by the town, similar to other communities around the country over the last several years. And one of the things that emerged uh, in those conversations and those attempts to bring in new code was we found that uh, East Hampton had taken to use a particular term, accessory dwelling unit, in a way that eventually emerged uh, in the broader nomenclature of the planning and architecture world to mean something slightly different than we had it in our code. And so what we are here to uh, share with you all this evening is a request for your comments to be forwarded to the town board so that as they deliberate the code change that I will walk you through, uh, they have the benefit of your counsel and wisdom as the planning board who is charged under our code with bringing uh, code amendments to you for your consideration. So with that said, uh, I will ask you to, in your packet, if you actually flip to the second page, there is a copy of the memo that Eric Chance wrote to the town board. And what it basically says is the term accessory dwelling unit in the East Hampton Town Code was brought into existence for a very particular circumstance. And that circumstance was when you have a historic structure on a property, we didn't want to be in the business of penalizing people for wanting to protect that historic structure. In fact, we wanted them to be able to protect that historic structure and still have the benefits of development of the property. So one of the uh, particular elements of our code is under certain circumstances, if you have a historic structure that is you know, appropriately recognized and documented as such, then you can actually treat that as a property where that can be preserved and then you can build a second uh, structure that would actually then serve as the principal dwelling. And so in effect, there is an opportunity under the code in this very limited set of circumstances where this exists to create a property where you would have two on the certificate of occupancy, you would have two dwellings that were perfectly legal uh, under the code and they could both be occupied. And so the term that we chose to apply to that in our wisdom at the time was accessory dwelling unit. And merrily, we went on our way for many years and every now and then one of these uh, very sort of rare circumstances would pop up where we would need to discuss this, consider it, review it, approve the uh, the request to build this second unit, and we had applied this moniker of accessory dwelling unit. Well, as I'm sure you all know, over the intervening years, this exact phrase, accessory dwelling unit, then came to mean something very different, which is basically what again, historically in other contexts would have been referred to as an in-law flat or something similar where you would have a principal structure and either attached to it or detached from it, you would have a relative or a rental unit or something like that. So you had a, a big thing and then attached to the big thing you had 
an accessory where somebody could dwell in that unit, right? And so the logic came into play here and everybody in the world decided, let's call these things accessory dwelling units. We're now in the position of having already solved both of these problems for ourselves in the town of East Hampton, meaning we figured out how to preserve the historic structures, yay, right? And we also figured out that there was a need for these accessory affordable apartments as we in our wisdom chose to name them before these terms had sort of settled out where they have at a national level. So now all we are doing is coming to you and saying, look, every now and then you gotta clean up the code. It's a living document. We need to basically dive into here. And once you begin pulling on that thread, uh, any of you who have drafted code know that very quickly you find, well, this piece is connected to another piece is connected to another piece. And so Eric Chance uh, did the hard work of going into the code and finding absolutely every single reference for uh, either an accessory dwelling unit or uh, an ADU and saying, uh, excuse me, meaning uh, an affordable accessory apartment and providing you with a copy of all of the changes that would need to happen. So the goal here is actually very simple. If there's somebody who says, I would like to build one of these apartments that I keep hearing about, whether they're watching the news or they're reading something in a magazine, that we're using the same language as everybody else. Yeah, so we want to make it easy. We've had multiple calls for people who have actually reached out to our office saying, I want to apply for one of these ADU things, but I don't have a historic thing on my property. What, what the heck is going on here? And we said, yeah, okay, I get it. Let's do the simple, obvious thing here and just adopt the language that the rest of the world has adopted. So you, what you have here is the, the full rigmarole from Mr. Chance. As you know, he's a very thorough individual. He's given you a copy of the town board resolution. He's given you a copy of the code. He's even given you a copy of the Suffolk County Planning Commission's recommendation to have this be a determination for the local level. So I will stop there and not make this any more complicated than I already have. I will welcome your comments to the extent that you have, comments that you want shared with the town board, we will memorialize those uh, and we will pass them on in a form of a memo to the town board. And speaking for myself, the thing I like the best is the red lining, which is, makes it incredibly easy to see. It's not red. Black strike line. through. Strike strike through. through. Yeah. Yes. If he had a color printer, it would be in red line. <laughs> we, we do work for the taxpayers. Well, he, yeah, although so I do see uh, green. Uh, yeah, there is green, so maybe Hello, somewhere yeah. there's a, yeah. All they right, just well, chose not to use that. Just, right, we'll use your <clears throat> strike. Right. Right. And, I, I, and speaking, you, you called it an in-law apartment. I heard the phrase mother-daughter. Uh, that probably <laughs> no, we, don't, we don't use that anymore. There's, there's, yeah. a, there's a couple things that I have stopped saying, and that is on my yeah, list, Mr. Chairman. This, so, this goes back to yes. many years. This I, makes I, perfect I sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I was actually committing on one of the rare uh, proposals to to do a, wait a minute, let me get it right, single family residence is accessory to a special historic landmark. And I noted this confusion. So this is this is great. Let's yeah. just clean it up. Yeah. Anybody yeah. have any other? I have no other comments. Nope. I think this makes perfect sense. Yeah. You <laughs> got <laughs> unanimity. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to call that a win and hit the road while I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you all. Take your marbles and run. <laughs> tell Eric you did a good job. Yes, tell Eric. Yes, tell Eric. Solid. <laughs> okay. All right. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. As I mentioned earlier, Myers is not going to be on tonight, but we're going to go to McDermott. Lou, that's yours. Uh, uh, is that yours, Ms. Wilshire? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. And that's yours. Uh, okay, this is the McDermott Lot Line modification located at 70 Shore Road and Blue Mountain Road um, in Pansit. And at each section, I'm just splashing the properties that are involved. One is currently developed a single family home, and the other is convenient. There's like a storage pod that straddles those properties. Just zooming out to show you um, where we are it's Lazy Point, Nucky Carver. Uh, I'm going to bring up the survey to explain um, what is being proposed. And then. So the application is made to modify the lot lines um, for the two properties I referenced. 
Um, you can see here this top uh, diagram shows the current configuration of the properties. They are both undersized. This is a, a resident zone where the minimum lot area is 40,000 square feet. And um, you can see um, the northern parcel is 19,000 square feet in change, and the southern parcel is 8,000 square feet in change. So, you know, very undersized for the zoning district. The proposal is to transfer a 4,899 square feet area to the southern parcel. That would make the northern parcel uh, less conforming with respect to zoning and the southern parcel more conforming with respect to zoning. Based on a review of the site history, um, oh, I'm just, before I jump into that, I'll show, and then the, this is what the proposed lines look like, right? The second lot, um, southern lot, would now be 13,000 um, square feet and change, and the lot other one would be 14,000 and change. Based on a review of the site history, there are uh, currently no certificate of occupancy documents available for the single family home on the southern lot. It appears that the southern lot was denied a CDA variance in 2021. Um, and that may be, you know, the reason behind the, the lack of the CO. So we just wanted to ask the applicant to clarify all that. Uh, this lot line modification would um, remove the need for the variance that was denied at that time. The issue was the side, side lot here, uh, side yard variance that I'm kind of circling. And with this expanded area of the southern lot, it, it would no longer, no, no longer be a concern. So regarding the analysis, our review of this indicates that it would require variance. Um, while both lots are non-conforming and existing, one lot, the northern lot, will become more non-conforming, and the typical practice has been when that occurs, we do require a variance uh, be sought from the ZBA. With respect to other dimensional requirements in the code, we are just asking for some very simple updates to the survey to ensure that the parcels as proposed to be configured um, align with the other dimensional regulations, including those for a lot with and the other in the memo. Um, moving on. We did note that you know, the configuration of the lots and all else looks consistent with code. There was really no information on existing um, utilities that we saw, although um, there is a proposed septic system or you know typical septic system shown for the northern lot. You know, it's typical in subdivisions to show the utilities and, and to spread out. Here's the water right here. So just wanted to make sure that information was on the survey. There was no information about stormwater collection. That should be clarified for the code section cited. And we note that the application will also include um, approvals from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services, Suffolk County Water Authority, and Zoning Board. The last thing I'll mention that as the lots exist, the planning department notes that this wouldn't increase potential density, so we don't think that's a concern. In fact, with the um, reduced size of the northern lot, the maximum maximum size of the dwelling unit there would be reduced as the GFA um, standards in the code are based on lot area. That said, the southern lot could build bigger. Um, but again, since both lots are existing, it's not really a, a density concern. Um, so, pending some minor information to be updated on the survey, we do think that this would be complete and ready for referral for the ZBA for their review for the lot area variants. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Lori Wiltshire for Land Planning Services. Uh, so, the storage pod has been removed and all building permits have been extended. We cannot close them out unless we obtain a variance for the deck or have the lot line modification approved. This will eliminate the need for the variance and is the main purpose of this application. They also wanted to make the lot similar in size to each other and to those in the neighborhood. Um, the deck issue was a builder measurement issue, which resulted in improper notice by the zoning board, so they could not approve the variance. 
After the lot line modification is approved, the side yard setback for the deck will be conforming. We have had the building envelopes added to the map along with the lot width measurements. Lot one will achieve the 160 foot required lot width. So the only variance that will be required for this lot line modification application is for the lot size reduction to lot one. Lot two gets bigger and the lot width does not change from what is existing today. There are no steep slopes of over 20% on the parcels. When lot one is developed, which will not be in the immediate future, an IAOWTS sanitary system will be installed and proper drainage to dry wells will also be indicated on building plans. And I make myself available for questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I don't really have a problem with this. Uh, we're just switching size of the lots, basically, or configurations of the lots, I should say. Um, I think it's a zoning board issue now. Uh, the, only, the only item that I want to bring up is that lot, the southern lot, has a cesspool, doesn't it? I believe that's correct. Uh, could, is there any way that you could commit to uh, upgrading that cesspool? I mean, it's just a hole in the ground, and you're I'm, right by the Peak Harbor. I am fairly certain that the health department is going to mandate that. Because the surveyor, I mean, the engineer has to actually open it, inspect it, and certify that it meets current code. Yeah. And if it doesn't, the health department's going to require the update. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing that I would ask for. Uh, other than that, I think it's ready to go to the ZBA. It's already at ZBA. <laughs> <laughs> in Q. Hey, I mean, it's in Q. <laughs> yeah. A little push. Okay. Anybody have any other comments on this? No, not right. no. I'm going to do the questions then. Does the planning board agree that the lot line modification and lot configuration is appropriate? Yes. yes. Does the planning board agree that additional details should be provided regarding the overall purpose and design of the lot line modification? Are we satisfied with what we heard? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Does the planning board agree the applicant should close out all open building permits before the proposed lot line modification could be considered? It seems pretty. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, they can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. I'm, I'm going to find out if we can close out some of them, but not the one that involves the deck. I yeah. don't know if they're going to allow us to do that. Uh, does the uh, planning board agree these additional details should be provided pertaining to stormwater drainage for the proposed subway? Uh, we didn't really talk about it. We didn't really just, cover yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Can that we get the handled as part of the, I mean, in this case, it's is not it really the, like. Is it for the vacant? Yes, it is. Part of the part of that, that's fine. Should we add something about Lou's inquiry regarding the, uh, um, yes, the cesspool in the uh, southerly, the southerly lot. Yeah, lot two. I'm sure yeah. that would be an ZBA yeah. issue. Which, the one, the, the one that, that, one. that has yeah. the yeah. one. No, no. The oh, no, the one that. Oh, right, right. Got it. It's the developed, it's the developed one. one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, sorry. How do you want? Uh, well, it says that we should send comments to the ZBA, so I think that should be one of the comments. That that should be a mitigating factor mm -hmm. in when they review this application. Can you do that? If you'd like them to consider that in their decision making, I don't yeah. see a reason that you can. That's a good addition. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Very good. good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next is the uh, site plan special permit application for Farrell Farm LLC, 15 Town Line Road in Wayne Scott. We're here for that, I presume. And process of elimination would indicate that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, sorry, that is going to be yours. Okay. Uh, take it away. Go me too. Uh, this is a site plan, uh, site plan special permit application for Barrel Farm LLC. It's located at 15 Town Line Road in Main Scott. Got the location up on the screen. It's an existing uh, private horse farm uh, for the last approval. Um, we are south of Montauk Highway, and here is the town of Southampton. So I will just zoom out a little bit so you can see regionally where we are. Um, right on the town line as, as indicated by the name. And then I'm going to bring up the survey and go through the information in our report to the board. So the site plan application is being made to request the legalization of several 
renovations and accessory structure additions to the existing horse farm called Barrel Farm. It is within a, a town agricultural overlay district. There are several specific structures at issue. Um, and I'm just going to list them because we're going to talk about them each. It's the uh, Memo Fazan. There's an addition to the horse barn, a new chicken coop, a sign in the front yard, a driveway gate, um, a relocated New York pit and patio, a new circular riding ring, a new horse paddock fencing along the northern property line, and changes to the um, training ring windows on the um, building, the training ring. <laughs> Those are the elements of the application that have already been built and that the application is requesting to legalize. The application also is requesting to construct some new structures, including a trailer parking area and to expand an existing outdoor riding ring that's located in the center of the site. The survey, um, the site is so big it's hard to read, but um, just zooming in a little bit. So here's the expanded riding ring right in the middle of the site. This is the horse barn where there was an addition um, placed without the appropriate permits. This indoor training ring is the one where the windows and doors were um, modified without planning or ARB approval. And then there's some structures that are new uh, against the northern property line, this riding ring, chicken coop, and the horse parking area. And then right over here is the manure um, area. And those, those features are, I'll just say, mostly existing except for the parking area, pardon me. This application came to the planning board. Um, it, it originated with a stop work order that was issued to the property. And then the planning department, code enforcement, and the applicant, along with the building department, had, had a field visit and, and documented the conditions on the site. So I'll show you those pictures as we go through. So, are those paddocks or? I'm sorry? On, I guess the eastern side? What, you know, that. Yeah, what is that? So, oh, sorry. So these paddocks, are, paddocks. are existing, correct. And then this is a paddock that was constructed without permits and the applicant seeking to legalize. Thank you. I, I didn't mention that one. Um, okay, so for the issues in the memo uh, regarding Zebra, we recommend that the action is type two and the category is listed in the memo. Next, regarding substantial expansion vis-a-vis -vis the special permit criteria, um, the horse farm is considered to be an animal husbandry use, which is the special permit use within this A5 residential zoning district. Um, we do not think that based on what we have here, this would qualify as a substantial expansion based on either GFA expansion or increase in value. But we do request that the applicant provide all the calculations in order for us to vet that and ensure that that's not the case. Regardless of whether a new special permit review is required by the board, which will be pending the information submitted, the special permit standards for animal husbandry are um, a lot focused on the dimensional requirements associated with the use. So those are pertinent, and so I am going to discuss them, and then they're really pertinent to the placement of all the structures on the site. So I'm going to go through those quickly, right? So animal husbandry, there's a minimum lot acre, minimum lot area of five acres, the site is that. The next one is that um, the board should take into account industry standards and practices with a particular type of husbandry. Um, there sometimes are minimum area standards associated with different types of animals. In the original um, approval for this site, it was called the Kilmar Farm Site Plan Resolution. There were no more than 15 horses to be allowed on the site. It's not clear how many horses are currently here. We don't know if the expansions on the site were in service or in anticipation of trying to increase the number of animals. So we do ask the applicant to provide that information to ensure that the site stays in compliance with that standard. The third area is regarding um, that accessory structures need to meet at least double the required minimum setback from property lines. We do note, and I'll go through this in detail when we go kind of feature by feature, that would be 80 feet in this A5 residence zone because the minimum setback is 40, and it doesn't appear that many of the structures that were constructed meet that. So if they can't meet it, they would need variance, but we would need to be confident that there was no way to meet the standards before we were ready to um, recommend variances be required. Um, the 
the next one is regarding perimeters of pastures and inclusion and um, open enclosure exercise areas need to be set back 10 feet from the boundary. We're not sure that the project complies based on the information we're asking the applicant to provide um, how they comply with that standard. The fifth standard for the special permit of animal husbandry is the management of animal waste and to ensure that those are disposed of in a manner which ensures no sanitary problems or nuisance. Um, this application does include a new concrete manure area in the northern area of the property. Um, so we do want the applicant to provide details on how that's compliant with the spirit of this requirement. We did note that there is a water well close to here. Um, you know, just to zoom in a little bit and the, the memo had some pictures. I mean, there's the manure storage area and there's the well. It says that they're concrete areas, so I'm assuming they're completely impermeable, but we would like an additional detail to ensure that that is indeed the case. And the applicant should explore if there's any other um, standards that may apply to those two features and their proximity to one another. The next status, uh, next criteria is regarding compliance with the town noise code. And that would really depend on whether there were new um, activities on site that may change the noise generation. So that's another thing we've asked for more information about. And then the last one is that each special permit authorizes a specific type of animal husbandry, in this case, horse farming. Um, if there's a change in the use and use for special permit is required. We know that there's a chicken coop. It's not clear if that's used in a way that would be an animal husbandry use. So we request that the applicant provide information about the use of that feature to determine that. Chicken coops are allowed, you know, I mean, there's plenty of residents that have them, but if this is a commercial use, um, I think that changes things. Tina, is there a res there's not a residence on the property, though, is there? No, that's true. There's no residence on the property. Okay. Yeah. Um, I still don't think it would be disallowed, but I don't know, you know, it, I think it depends on the use, if it's a husbandry special permit use. Okay. Um, okay, so that's kind of the special permit standards. I'm going to go as quickly as I can structure by structure, because each structure has different issues that we really want to make sure get clarified. Can you use uh, a photograph, perhaps? Yeah, so I'm going to just, uh, I do, there were some photographs in the memo, and I will go um, through them. So the first uh, structure we're talking about is the horse barn addition. You can see clearly what um, the elements of that building are. The, there's two things here. One is that there's a small uh, discrepancy in GFA. We would just like that clarified. And the second thing was that it was unclear if internal reservation internal renovations have occurred to this building that have changed the use in a way that's relevant. We'd like the applicant to you know compare the floor plan to what was approved and you know let us know if there's any changes there. The next change is the indoor lighting room demonstration. So this just shows um, what the facility looks like now and. Um, these elevations here kind of compare the different buildings um, and you can see the, the horse barn I think is a couple down yeah so here's what it looked like on the left the horse barn and this is what it looks like now on the right um, so that's not really a, a significant change again the only other thing is if there's made uh, changes made to the interior of the structure it would be important for us to understand those if they change the overall use of the site. The next is regarding the outdoor riding rings. So um, one of these needs to be um, legalized, the circular riding ring, and then the rectangular riding, and the circular riding ring is right here on the left, rectangular on the right. The rectangular is being expanded, expanded by a good amount. We just want those clarified in terms of how large the structures are. Um, it wasn't crystal clear what the existing size is versus the proposed. That's what we'd like to see. Um, the next one is the manure pit and patio. Um, this is a dimensional issue as well as um, a special permit issue, as we discussed earlier. 
the um, on the provided site plan, and I'm just going to go back to that so we can all look at it together. The manure pits rather close to the northern property line. Um, there is no uh, dimension provided, but the standard is 80 feet, and it does not seem to meet that. So we would ask the applicant, you know, to confirm that it's not 80 feet. It doesn't um, appear to be. And if this facility can be relocated to a place that is conforming on the location, um, conforming on the site, assuming this is a rather noxious um, use of area, obviously you want to have it somewhere um, tucked away, but it is rather close to the uh, northern property line. Tina, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Is that it, with the, the use to the north, is that is that agricultural right there? Residential. residential. Oh, it is residential. Residential on the north side. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. And um, yeah, these are residences here. And these oh. areas are vacant. I'm not sure who owns these properties, but residential properties. Got it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then the chicken coop, we are up to. Um, just flipping back down, the chicken coop is about uh, 10 feet by 26 feet. Does not look huge, um, but we do want to know whether or not the chicken operations on site involve any sale or commerce activities in order to evaluate. Uh, whether or not it's a, a different animal husbandry use as the only one on the site that's authorized is for the horses. And then again, the chicken coop is also rather close to the northern property line. Um, and this does have its mention at, at 15.7 feet. So that's another structure that's not conforming to the special permit standards. And we should seek a conforming location for um, the site. Next, some issues uh, regarding fences and gates. Um, I won't go through these in great detail, but um, there is existing fencing. Some of the fencing does not seem to be in compliance with the special permit criteria. There is a picture in the memo that shows uh, it's elsewhere kind of some protected easement areas where there was additional fence setback requirements. So we'd like the applicant to, you know, look at their fencing, confirm that it is in compliant locations and clearly list um, the heights. There is a proposed sign um, with this application and there is a picture of the sign provided which I'll look for while I say that the sign should be moved up to an on-premise location. Right now, it is located off of the property, and the town code connection cited in the memo does require that it is um, moved on the property. Regarding parking areas and setbacks, there are currently four gravel parking spaces, and this is the number um, approved in the last site plan. So we're not going to revisit that, but we do ask, uh, again, confirming the number of horses, and if those increase, we, we do need to evaluate that on addition to the horse themselves, whether or not that's parking. And then there does not seem to be any employee parking, but the special permit standard does require that. So we do want to know how many employees are on there to determine <coughs> if um, additional parking may be appropriate for the location. There's a picture of the parking area here okay so that is oh and then the other thing for i have to go back to the survey is that the proposed parking area also does not meet the setbacks right so this is proposed for trailer parking you know parking's an accessory structure um and it's, it's right on top of their property line not meeting the setbacks so moving on to final subdivision requirements, um, we noted in the memo that there was a something that wasn't clear. Oh, this is where the fencing information was. It's not entirely clear that the fencing as constructed um, comports with the requirements in the subdivision, and we just included the code, the requirement verbatim in our analysis. Um, that it looks like because there's an easement, um, the fencing doesn't need to be backed off that. 
Next, regarding the landscaping plan, there was a mistake. There is a landscape plan. Um, there isn't extensive landscaping, which is appropriate for the use, I would say, when you want to have these open vistas. And I think we would just want to ensure, once we know the final placement of structures, that whatever landscaping is utilized as screening is appropriately placed and um, you know with careful attention to surrounding uses and you know not to interfere with the farm use. Regarding lot, lot coverage, I won't belabor this, but there are some inconsistencies that are in the memo, so those should be revised. Regarding the water and sewer systems, no information um, was located on those. We would like to hear a little more that well was the example, but we're not sure how that's used. Um, we did make a list of the necessary elements of site plan submission from the code and just explained what we thought was missing and what information we'd like to see on the plans moving forward. Um, we haven't received fire marshal comments yet, and we do have a list of agencies that we think um, would need to review this, the ARB, Suffolk County Planning Commission, CBA, if the um, variances that are shown here um, are ever allowed to stand, and uh, potential um, Suffolk County Department of Health Services if there's any nexus. So in conclusion, the application's incomplete um, pending submission of these additional details. Do you want to confirm whether or not an additional special permit is required based on either value or um, gross floor area expansions? And um, the full site plan, including all necessary elements, would greatly uh, facilitate the continued discussion. Thank you. Thank you for that very thorough report on this very large parcel. Mm -hmm. Thanks. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Sounds pretty bad. But my comments will be brief and then we'll address everything. Um, thank you, Brian DeSessa, attorney for the applicant and homeowner, uh, property owner. Um, so some of the things that we're here to legalize were from a previous owner, some of the things are from the current owner. Either way, we'll resolve everything. Um, it's a family horse farm. The chickens are not for sale or anything like that. It's a minimal amount of chickens. I think there's 10 or 11 there now that the family uses. The interior spaces have not been changed, altered in their use or otherwise. Um, they've been cleaned up and upgraded. We had the fire marshal, building department, code enforcement, town attorney's office. Um, planning department. Planning department. <laughs> Conservation all came out. Uh, sorry, in, I mean, we had about 11 people out there in, in December, so they walked through, they took pictures of everything, so the inside stuff, everything's the same, nobody's living there. There's currently three horses on the property. The approved permit in place is for 15. There's not an intent to do that. Maybe we have four there. There's one employee. Um, we'll get. We'll answer all the technical memo, and we got it Friday, so we we'll just need a little time to do all that. Um, our intent is not to look for variance, so if we were given setbacks or otherwise, we can. The chicken coop can move. It was a pre-constructed structure that they dropped on the earth there, so we can we can deal with that. The um, circular ring, which is the uh, turnout, has been removed. We didn't know that that didn't have a permit, so that was that was taken down. Um, the manure pit was approved, I think, at an area of approximately 50 or 60 feet in the special event permit. I'll have them to mention that. It does appear to be closer. Um, it was upgraded to be below grade, and there's a, a, a bin, a 10-yard bin in it that gets emptied bi-weekly, so it gets emptied twice a week that's covered, and we screened around it. We thought that was being a better neighbor, but we'll, we'll provide those details and, and analysis as to what, what happens there. Um, no internal square footage was added in terms of use or otherwise. Um, that porch was added, that second floor balcony for viewing. There was always an office on the second floor of the, um, the stable where they have uh, 14 stalls. So that office was changed and they added a deck so they could walk out from the office and see the horses that are in the paddocks and stuff. Um, which we know we have to legalize. Um, the well is there to provide water to the to the property, and we can provide uh, Suffolk County Health Department. Um, there's 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 a bathroom on site that was approved. It does have a sanitary system, so we can add that to the to the approval process. Um, just by way of items, and I won't hold you this evening since we're going to add uh, all details. This we did ask to add a gate um, that would match the fencing at, at the front entrance of the property. The posts are there, the gate is there, uh, and to automate that, more of just a safety uh, issue for horses and everything that's going on there. It's not a solid gate, it matches the rest. Um, the sign, uh, there's been a sign there, as I know, for maybe a decade or more, and 
what the applicant did was take the same sign and just change the name on it and put it out. So I didn't really, we did, they didn't know it was in a different spot, so we can locate that to a conforming spot per pursuant to this process. Um, that's not, a, that's not an issue at all. Um, in terms of perimeter fencing, we can provide feedback on that. We had been in touch with the town attorney's office and the special permit being, uh, you know, a difference in setbacks for perimeter fencing and paddock fencing, as you know, with the paddocks to the, to the east and, and otherwise. Um, so I would just ask for some time to be able to provide you guys with all this information. We have no objection to providing it. I'm just going to need some time based on the magnitude of information that's being required here. But rest assured that it's still being used as a horse farm. I think some members might have visited the farm to see that it's still a farm. I know other members of the town have been out there. And it's not a commercial operation. There's no anything else going on there aside from a you know, private family uh, horse farm. So I'm happy to answer any questions you have have your technical memo, which we will work through. We just need some time to do that. Very good. Brian, we'll discuss it amongst ourselves. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bruce. All right. Great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Lisa. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to re reiterate a few things um, going to the list. Um, you know, obviously, we talked about the front sign. Um, one thing that I think is really important to note is there are residential properties along the north property line, and that's basically where the bulk of these accessory structures are located, um, which do require that large setback. So um, I'll sort of get to that in a minute. Um, the one thing I didn't find when I was looking on the GIS is a reference to the scenic easement. I know we have that in our paperwork in that north, I think, east corner, but I did not see that on my GIS map. Yeah, so the GIS mapping of the easements is incomplete. And what um, Dan included in the memo, let me, there was just screenshots. We do have the easement documentation, so I'm happy to kind of um, like to circulate the documents to the board. I don't, we didn't include them here, I don't think, just because there's so much um, history on the site. But if you can see here, um, this is the northern property line, and there's this one place where there is a scenic easement abutting. The property abutting the property adjacent yeah, to it's right here. It's so on here another, yeah, it's on the other property. Yeah. This is the property here down down here. In, oh, I see. And then here's where it. Um, and this is like okay. the approximate location. I see. Okay. Um, yeah. So, like like we said, um, along the north property line are the two fences right on the property line where you know a 10 foot setback required the horse barn addition again i was sort of confused with gfa versus lot coverage because i don't think there's an increase in gfa or heated space but i think there's an increase in building coverage for the um covered porch area so i was just confused with that um right for, for non-habitable structures i guess gfa is like the interior like wall to wall like okay. measurement, right? So it is different when it's not habitable, okay. but it's it's a similar concept. But we also do want we want it all clarified. Ab absolutely. The GFA structures. What is the coverage? Right. So I think when we're reading through the menu, uh, the uh, the memo, the four hundred thirty ish plus or minus number is not a GFA. I think it's a building coverage number because it's outdoor. Um, Area. So I, that, that's just a clarification that I was okay. I was sort of thinking about reading through this because it's not a big heated addition. It's just outdoor space. Um, in terms of the indoor riding ring, I think that change is just probably purely aesthetic change of windows. Um, you know, obviously the chicken coop again is on the northerly side, pretty close to the property line. I think it's what fifteen feet away from the north property line so i think that's that's something we should probably think about um the bigger issue i think is the the manure pit and patio um when i scaled the survey i was getting about 13 feet from the property line and again that does butt up to um a residence so i think that's something pretty important that we should consider um even possibly having that moved um, outdoor riding wing, so the circular ring was removed. I think that's fine. There was a substantial increase in the um, rectangular ring, which is in the middle of the property. I mean, I don't, I don't at least foresee an issue with that. It's in the center of the property. 
it's it's not a structure or anything. Um, the new northern paddock, which is up in that upper right corner, I think that meets the setbacks. You know, there's no dimensions on there, but I think that one's probably not an issue as well. Um, and then the one last thing is the other structure in the middle, which is that trailer parking patio or pad. Again, that's that's right against that north property line. And again, there's a residence right there. So um, that's all my my notes. Okay. Does anyone else have any additions if they want to? I, I, I share your concern about the the proximity thinking. of the uh, chicken coop and the uh, manure pit to the uh, residences to the immediate north. I, you know, it's nothing that I would want to be. And the parking, and the parking, and the parking, right? Yeah, yeah. And the, the parking, and the fence as well. Yeah, the yeah. fence. Is, the, I mean, it seems like all the problems seem to be yeah. on the northern on the side. North side. Yeah, the folks. It's the fence, the, the manure pit, the parking. The trailer parking. The trailer, the yeah. chicken coop. The chicken coop, all, all that just don't meet the proper dimensions. Right. Yeah. And actually the proposed or the, the four parking spots don't either. And I think that's that's sort of pre-existing. Those were on the existing. Those were on the existing, yeah. Existing, plan. yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That'll be involved, you know. So, I mean, it's it, it's kind of jump out at you. So, Jen, did you have something else? Yeah, just from like a broader perspective, I agree with all of that. For three horses, this seems like an awful lot of paddock space, riding rings, indoor space, and so I wonder, are you know, are there lessons being given there? Maybe privately, or is are there plans to? board horses i just it's it's are we a asking huge for, are we asking for a narrative in the uh, question yeah, yeah. i'm just well because there's a limit on the number of horses that can be yeah no it's, I think it's like one acre per horse. right so i i'm just just on a you know like grander perspective you know in two years are there going to be you know multiple can I answer that? And how many horses in the summer? Because I know a lot of these horses exactly, go south people, in the winter. Right, exactly. People bring their horses back up. That's It just so seems like a huge... The paddocks are important because they rotate. They don't turn them out the same day. They eat the same all the mm -hmm. time. They're eating grass. Out. We rotate that for management on there. Um, the previous special exception was for 14 horses. We never planned to exceed that. Mm -hmm. um, there's three horses there that remain there year round. Um, there may be one or two more that come in the summer. Mm -hmm. Souls aren't for rent. They're not letting other people go there. The, less, the only lessons that are given are for the family that owns horses that live there. So it's not a perf it's not a pay for lesson for you can't right, that's show it. up and, and that's, do it. That's Someone comes question. there and gives a lesson, but it's not a. Um, Set of barn where you, they have horses and lessons are available. We can call up schedule and, and do that. That's not that's not the situation, which so, would violate so, the special exception and is not the intent or the application. Could someone board a horse there? I mean, there no. are plenty of stalls, so someone couldn't just board and then use it for their own, you know, no. riding purposes. It's just it's is that just something you'd be willing to covenant? It's private. It's private. It's private. I yeah. just having <laughs> that's already having been exception, having 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 ridden at a bunch exception. of barns mm -hmm. when I was younger. Yeah. I know that that happens mm -hmm. sometimes. So just curious. You know, I just, I, I'm familiar with the barn and how yeah. it was operated previously. Yeah, I was. I, I was. Um, full disclosure, not that it matters. I've been on that property yeah, when, no, when we, the prior we, owner owned <clears> the <throat> come house. So, and the increase in addition. Uh, in the center is really the, the footing for the riding for dressage and jumping. So it's a different uh, footing material you need for the horses for jumping, riding, and, right. and otherwise, which is a similar material to that's the in, indoor riding rink. So, excuse me, but it's private because you choose for it to be private. If you wanted, you could give lessons. I don't believe you could based on the special exception. It's permit. a special. The special, the special the exception only doesn't allow it to be. Private it's for, private. for a private. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what we have. That, it's, that already, it's already enshrined. That's why I realized yeah. that's what I was saying. It's we was knowing that, and that was the intent to, okay. to continue it as private, which is already the reason that they have the, the special exception permit so we to keep we, it as a So we don't need to get involved in covenants and, and restrictions. Mm -hmm. okay. Correct. So. Although, I mean, it's a lot of infrastructure. It's a lot of infrastructure. Well, that, that was, yeah. Right? I mean, let's face it. It's also on 14 and a half acres, so it's, you know, good size. I understand. I understand. Um, I don't think the previous owners had 14 horses. No, I never did. 
never, yeah. never anything like this. Was the indoor riding ring was what, what was there before when they when this family purchased the indoor riding ring? The indoor riding ring. The only thing that was changed was the windows in the door. Okay, that was there. The whole building was there. It was just the, the stable. The stable was there. All the yeah. buildings that are there they were have all been there. there, with the exception of, of the chicken the coop. chicken coop, the rebuilt manure pit, <laughs> and where we put the pad down to park the horse trailer is where the previous owners parked the trailer. We just put cement so that the trailer parks on it, which when okay. they leave the horse show. So it was in the location. Yes, it's not right. We'll fix that. But all we did was put bluestone down to park the trailer on instead of where they had previously parked. I think the they wanted, I think the too. original intent was to have like a variety of environments. I yeah. think that was, that, that was, I mean, I don't want to speak for the prior owner, but that, that was the sense I got. It was like, uh, this, this, that, so. I, I don't think I'm misstating. No, no, that's exactly accurate. We they still come around, so they live, they live adjacent to it. So they're yeah, oh, off them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, this family does, or the previous uh, previous owner? family, previous owner, previous owner. Yeah. Near the manure pit. I was just no. going to say, are they near are the manure they pit? Or, right? They actually put it there. We just rebuilt it. They live on the south side, so that's oh, why they probably put it there. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Get the previous owners, that's where far south. So, um, yeah. but no, we can, well, we can well, address we'll, this. We'll have our problems. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. We've talked to all the neighbors up there, so we have. I think you get the scent of where we're going with this. <laughs> Not a problem. We're we're willing to work and fix that. So we just need some time. Is that too easy? Yeah. Well, I, have, I have a yeah, go ahead, please, I have a broader please. comment on this because I'm reading it through this, and it it's another example of. Let's ask forgiveness instead of permission. I mean, they're putting in things when you you could have come to us first, and it's not like Farrell doesn't know anything about building. So why are we here? Why did code enforcement have to stop this? I, I, I am just when reading through this. I was just like, what in the world is going on? That's my broader comment. That seems to happen an awful lot. Glad you're here, but uh, Michael's point is well taken. It would have been, you know, what's the phrase? It's easier to ask for permission than uh, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness and permission. permission. Yeah, well, so. think, we don't want to make it easier. We don't well, want to. Exactly. No, 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 no. That's the point. But it was done by the previous owner. Some of it no, 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 no. Some not all. No, no. In Some fact, I would, think, I would think very little. I think the sign was done by the previous owner. That it was. I know that. That sign I've been So let's not. Actually, so it's not been passed that sign for years. The round riding, the additional paddock, some of the fencing, the previous similar location of the manure pit, the sign, those were all previous owner changes. The pit? The manure pit? No, we added the pit. The yeah, placement of it was there. We just added the, the pit to it. That's where it has always been. Well, like Sam, I've been there a few times. So. so. Yeah. Well, you know, but again, I mean, just speaking more broadly, Michael's point is well taken, not just in this Absolutely. instance, but in many others. So, all right. Um, time for questions? Any? I'm going to go through the mm -hmm. questions. I think we're going to hear yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, should the applicant submit a revised set of plans, including existing and proposed gross floor area calculations for all structures on the subject property? Mm -hmm. yeah. Should the applicant submit a brief narrative for the for the board for describing the current activity on the subject property, including number and type of animal husbandry uses, in addition to the nature and use for each new riding area, horse paddock, barn expansion, chicken coop, manure disposal methods, number of employees, and pasture mm -hmm. management practices? Yes. yes. Okay, Absolutely. good, good. Should the applicant update the survey to include the distance of setbacks between all existing and proposed structures and the adjacent lot lines of the subject property? Yes, yes, all around. Yes. Should the applicant submit a revised set of plans, including the accurate GFA of the new horse barn and GFA of all structures? Yes. yes. Should the site plan be revised to include the existing and proposed area and square foot of the rectangular riding ring to be expanded as part of this application? Yes. yes. Should, the should the existing... Should the existing manure pit and patio be relocated to meet the 80-foot minimum setback requirement pursuant to requirement three, the special permit standards for an animal husbandry use? Yes. And yes. That you're getting a yes. loud yeah. unanimity. So can, can I just clarify this? one question? Yeah, please, go ahead. The current approval was for 60 feet. What do we do with that? The, 60 or 80? 
There's no approval. So you're saying that the what like that either, though. Well, the question right, the exception site plan had the question feet. says mid eighty feet, but the applicant's saying so that it's sixty feet. So I'll have to look feet. at that. I mean, I I don't see that on the old plans, but maybe it's just not apparent. The special permit standard is eighty feet because it's double setbacks. So. Yeah, that would make sense. If if you have a previous approval and it's very clear, I would just want to check with um, the town attorney's office and we'd have to study it. Let's see what it is. I, I would think that this board would prefer the larger setback, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Should the applicant provide additional information about the use of the on site well and coordinate with Suffolk County regarding potential setback requirements between the well and manure management facilities, if applicable? Yes. yes, it's the requested chicken coop use permit under the existing special permit standard. And is it, I'm sorry, is the requested chicken coop use permitted under the existing special permit standard? And if so, be relocated to the meet the minimum 80 feet minimum setback mm -hmm. requirement pursuant to requirement three of the special permit standards. Um, I, yes. Anyone disagree? Yes. Okay. Does the planning board find that the raising and pasture of chickens is an acceptable use on the subject property? Yes. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of yeah. eggs. Okay. Well, <laughs> chickens and horses. Well. That's fine. <laughs> Does the planning board agree that the planning department with the plan on the existing fence along the northern property line should be relocated to meet the minimum 10 foot setback as required by the original Kilmore Farm site plan resolution? Yes. yes. Should the existing Farrell Farm sign be relocated to a conforming location on the subject property? Yes. Yes, yes from the applicant on that. Should the applicant confirm the number of employees currently servicing the lot so that any additional parking requirements can be calculated pursuant to 255-1145 of the town code? Did they do that? They, did. they, 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 they may, point. he stated yeah. that, but yeah. they'll put it in yeah. line first. Does the uh, planning board agree the planning department with the planning department that a revised set of plans should be submitted directing the proposed trailer parking area within a conforming location on the subject property? Yes. 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 Should the applicant accurately show the existing and proposed plantings on the subject site? That's pretty straightforward. Yes. Should the site plan be revised to indicate accurate calculations for existing and proposed lot building coverage and total lot coverage on the subject property? Yes. yes. Should the applicant provide additional details regarding existing and or proposed water supply systems on the subject property? Yes. Yep. Yes, on that. Should the site plan be revised to include location of all easements on, over, and adjacent to the site? Two more. Should the applicant submit the required information pursuant to 255-650 necessary elements of site plan, including information on stormwater drainage, sanitary sewer systems, setbacks, etc.? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Finally, if new lighting fixtures are proposed, should the applicant submit an exterior lighting plan depicting locations and specifications for each for each fixture proposed, demonstrating compliance with town code and board policies? Yes. And that's a yes. Okay. So you got some work to do. Mm -hmm. Can I just make one other comment? Please. <clears throat> there's just something that's been making me slightly uncomfortable here, and that is it's it's sort of one thing when there's a family horse farm and the family lives next to it, right? I'm, I'm just there's just something about all this infrastructure in you know, I know there's a special permit for this particular use, but I just find something unsettling about about this and about what may happen if, a, if there's a future owner of this of this property you know I, I know that you know there's already a special permit standard for this particular situation and that's been that's been granted and that theoretically covers any future use but it's like just you know given that this is not adjacent to the family's residence it feels like it could so easily become something else Right. Even though that you're you're saying the family doesn't intend it to, it just seems like an incredible amount of, of waste in a, in effect, uh, in in a, in a certain sense, to have it be okay. all this infrastructure. But they would have to come in front of us for it to be anything else, because I think it has the, the use is it is the use. So anyone, anyone, private, I mean, like the special, special permit, permit runs with the land, right? So there's also an easement on what? the property that I should have mentioned. I skipped through that as I was trying to summarize. There's an agricultural easement on the property that does limit the use um, to the specified types of agricultural operations. And I was just reading it. Riding academies, for example, is one of those. So riding academy is not. Academy, for example, is 
example, wouldn't be okay. an agricultural use, like allowed per the easement. So I think what we need to do is just next time we meet, I'll talk about that easement a little bit more. I'd like to know more about that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, cause there, I, you know, I think yes. it's extremely limiting what you yeah. can do. Yeah. 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 So there. I understand that, but I think you have to also kind of admit that it is a lot of infrastructure, right? For the kind of use that's being proposed. So it's just, there's that sort of lack of balance there in a certain sense. I understand. In this world, I would disagree, so that means... this is... No, I, I agree that's with a good you. Point. I, that is kind there... of my, that was trying, what I was trying to get at also, that it's an enormous amount of infrastructure for three horses. To, you know, you know what I mean? It just seems like a, a lot. You'd be more comfortable if it was a residence attached to it? Seriously, I mean, is that like where you're going with the with the comment? That yeah, well, no, I'm not suggesting that there should be. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying because I mean that's kind of the alternative. If I mean, and it's not. It's not. It's not what it is. No, I know it is. You know, it is. but but the, but the previous owner lived next door, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, that feels like a very different kind of situation to me, right? That's all. This is a standalone facility, essentially, right? Um, I don't know. I think you know what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to be sure that you know, and I, and you know, I, the easement language will be important to kind of understand. Yeah. And yeah, you know, you know how things have a tendency in, in our part of the world here to slip into something else, you know, adjacent and an adjacent use well, easily this, enough, even when there are, you know, covenants and, and easements and usage restrictions. I can tell you, I this matter, this application, when it originally was proposed it was 20 years ago yeah. or something like that it, it was subject to a lot of local scrutiny and uh, it, 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 there were there were people who were really really opposed to the uh the um, application the size of the riding rings the, the the barns it was it was something that people were very much uh aware of uh, in, in, in the community i, I know this and uh you know I, I think that what what end what ended up was uh, re reflected i don't want to say reflected in the community because you know it was a private structure and it was built by the prior owner but it was there's a, there was always an awareness of what was being built and what what it, what it ended up being yeah so but but you're right we should hear about the easement we should hear about the yeah. legal stru structures uh, strictures i should say and um and uh, have comfort yeah. that, that that if somebody were to come along and do the things about which you're fearful that there would be consequences, yeah. legal, significant legal consequences <laughs> for any future owner. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an unusual situation. <laughs> there are right. other. They're on watch. They're they're on watch. Horse yeah. There are other yeah. private horse facilities yeah. of, on oh, the all scale. Over, all yeah. over. Uh, the, the, uh, all over, I don't no, know. No, but no, there are all over the town. I mean, there are, there are a number of horse farms. Uh, in, in you know Private. in the in yeah. the town yeah, yeah. the town yeah. of East yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm saying so there are some yeah yeah yeah, right. yeah. no and everyone's and they are under a microscope to a certain extent yeah, yeah. But, and this one is you know I mean a lot uh, uh, there's a couple I'm thinking of right off the top of my head where you wouldn't know they're there until you get there mm -hmm. but this one you know it's there mm -hmm. you go downtown line road <laughs> and you can't miss it it's it's even if they move the sign off the street you won't, <laughs> you won't, you won't miss it <laughs> so, okay all right so we'll see you again for sure <laughs> a little bit of time so yeah no. Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, uh, Sharon. Uh, we're moving into regular meeting. Yes, Sharon. Yes. In the matter of the application of Christina Schlesinger, text map number 300 80 3 38, uh, this is an uh, approval for an artist studio expansion. Um, and I've read the resolution and refer to the Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed 7 nothing. And Lou Inlet Seafood. In the matter of the application of Inlet Seafood Restaurant, Bar, and Lighthouse Site Plan Special Permit, Suffolk County Tax Map Number 200-6-2-3.1-36. I have read the extension of time allowing the applicant to obtain a building permit until April 18, 2025. I move for its adoption. Is there a second? Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Pass seven nothing. Um, the minutes uh, I'll move that they be approved. That I just have one slight modification, Jody, if you don't mind. On Beckman, it says the board agrees to the proposed modification request. I'd like it to reflect that that was a six to one vote. Correct. Yeah. 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 I don't six, think there's zero one, one. There's one there. abstention. Uh, it was an abstention. It was an six, abstention. You're right. Yeah. Six. Thank you. Thank you. It was six. Zero, one. one. Six, six nothing with one obsession. I think all the others were unanimous. I don't think there was any yeah. other dissent, but I think to the extent that it wasn't unanimous, it should be reflected. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, just, with that modification, you have any I do. There are just Jen? two things. Um, Secretary Jody Walker was not here at this meeting, Ooh. though she's listed she as was president. Not. Well, let's make that she change. Was no. <laughs> and Maram is just spelled wrong. And I, you know, just, <laughs> sorry. Let's get that right. <laughs> Well, on Beckman on the last page. The last page. It says six, one abstention. There right, you right. go. Oh, there Thank go. you. Okay, then maybe we can make the two references to Beckman consistent with one another, <laughs> front page and wherever else it is. With those slight changes, I move for the uh, adoption of the minutes. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Seven, no. Okay. Uh, we're off next week, I presume, and uh, then we're back in action the following week. Okay, that sounds that, good. You would like to have it. <laughs> Sharon's, Sharon's up. Today, I'm very happy. Turn this big van right now. Oh, oh is that you? <laughs> <laughs> All the bicycles in the back. So, make a motion <laughs> to Has anyone <laughs> made the motion to No one has, but if you do, do it. All right, is yeah. there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you.